about where we were in the last lesson. So at the end of the last lesson, we spoke a lot about finding the equation, well, not a lot, actually, we spoke a little bit about finding the equations of parabolas. So we spent lessons before that talking about sketching parabolas, and I gave you a five-step process, and then we talked about sketching parabolas when they give it to you in different forms. There are different forms of, of parabolas. Now, today, most of the lesson will be around finding the equations of parabolas, and then once we've found those equations, we're going to talk a little bit about something called domain and range. We're also going to talk about if we want to, if there's time, shifting the parabolas. If I shift the parabolas left and right or up and down, um, what happens? Although we, we spoke about that a little bit in the last lesson. And then I also want to come back to the intersection point of two uh, functions. How do, we, how do we find that intersection point if there's time? Uh, but basically, we use the same ideas that we spoke about with, with straight lines. It's the same idea where we use a simultaneous equation. Okay, so that's the intention for today. So let's get to our first example. So in the last lesson, I snuck in this last question where we figured out that the equation of the parabola that is currently on screen was y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. And in order to do that, we had to use a particular process. And the process we used was using what's called the root form or the x-intercept form of a parabola. And what it is, is it looks like this. And in this case, x1 and x2, they are particular things. They are the, the roots of the um, particular equation or the x cuts. But just because we've got those two values, we still need another point in order to find what we call the a value. And so in this particular example, we found that a was 1. And then once we've done all that, we can finally multiply out uh, what we have here to get the final equation. So I want to ask, if you feel like you remember the basic process for doing this from the last lesson, give a thumbs up. If you feel very unsure about what's going on here, give a thumbs down. Because I can talk a little bit more about this, but I, most of me wants to go to a an example question where you practice. Um, but I will, if enough students say that they are unsure, I will, will explain another example. Okay, it's a bit of a mixture at the moment. Let me do a quick review explanation of this example. And then I will we'll do an example where you just practice this. Okay. All right, let's talk through the same example from last time. So how did I start this question? I started by basically just writing out the standard form of a parabola, or like I've done above here. So I've basically done this bit here. Now, my first step is going to be to look at my drawing. And in my drawing, I see that my x-intercepts are x is 1 and x is 5. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to put those, I'm going to put these values into this equation that I've, I've shown you, the, the root form of a parabola. So I took one, I took five, and I put it here. Now I need to sub in another point. Now the other point on my particular parabola here is the point minus 112. So I wrote it up here. And then I'm going to sub this point minus 112 in. And what we see is where there's an x, I'm going to put minus 1. But this is the x. It's this one over here. And where there's a y, I'm going to put a 12. Now, I'm going to collect. So minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 1, minus 5 is minus 6. I multiply these together, minus 2 times minus 6, and I get 12. And then I get 12 is 12a. Then I divide both sides by 12, and I get that a is 1. 
Now we go back to the very beginning. At the very beginning, I knew x minus one and x minus five were part of this, but I still need to incorporate the one. Okay, but the good news is the one doesn't really change anything. So then I multiply out my brackets, I collect like terms, and I get this. Okay, what I want you to do is take a screenshot of this if you need to, and let's repeat this process on this question here. So I'll help you to get started by writing out the root form of a parabola. So that's going to be my healthy tip. And I'm going to say to you, try and see if you can find the equation of this parabola. Remembering that this over here is connected to the x intercept over here. Okay, over to you guys. Those who are able to do it, I want you to do it now, but those who are very stuck and want, to, want me to talk about this a bit more, I want you to raise your hand or I want you to uh, basically yeah, put something in the chat so we know kind of how it's going with you. Let's do this, guys. Emmanuel, is that a question or you want to answer this question? I think it's probably just but a question. Peter, there we go. Emmanuel, we're unmuting you. Yes. Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask because I just came now. I'm okay. a bit lost at, at what you are explaining. Can you explain it again, please? Okay. So... The question, the point of this question is to determine the equation of the parabola and the parabola okay. is given below. Now, whenever we figure out the equation of a parabola um, and we're given this type of information, we start by writing out what's called the root form of a parabola. Basically where we have, um, it looks like this box up here. But what's important about that is that the X1 and X2 are the x-intercepts from the parabola that we're trying to find. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it now, makes sense. Okay, now once you've done that part, we're going to use this point over here to help you figure out what A is. That's what we're doing. Oh, okay. okay. So give it Thank a go. You, yeah. <laughs> Let's give it a try, everybody. Woo, I'm Bongwe on the line. Okay. Bongwe, how can I help? Uh, so I get A is a half, but do you leave it in fraction form or? Okay. I'll get to that in a moment. So I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is yet because I haven't worked it out. But normally, if you've got a half sitting in front and you've got these things, Often the question will ask you to use um, leave it in standard form. And my advice would be to leave the half outside and just work out what the multiplying stuff is. And then at the very end, apply the half. Okay. Does that Thank make you. sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's see. I think, and I have to be careful here because I have minus minus one. And that can catch a few people. And then here I have x minus 4. So that's what I get to start with. But I still need to use the point 2 to figure out what my a value is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sub this value into here to help me find a. So... Guys, I'm not going to give it to you yet, but when you found A, will you pop your answer for A in the chat? I just want to see if we're agreeing on what this A value is. Uh, was that a hand up? Okay.
We can do this, guys. We can do this. Remember? Oh, Lorato with an answer. Okay. What was your A value, Loretta or Lorato? I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but... Um, oh, A, sorry. You said, yeah, A6. <laughs> My brain has just gone blank for a second. It's been a long day. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. And come by, you are more than welcome to put that answer. Don't worry. We'll do corrections as long as you try. Yeah. My, my main thing is just, yeah, exactly. So we'll figure it out now. I just want to see what students are getting so I get a feel for the, for the um, thing. So make sure my Y goes with two and then the A is going to stay like this. And then I'm going to get plus one. Then this should be a zero. So what do we have there? We've got two equals that's going to be one, that's minus four. And then we get two is minus four A. And if I divide both sides by minus four, A is going to be two over minus four or minus a half. So guys, I get negative a half for my answer for A. So well done, Kateko. That's what Kateko got. So what I want to point out is that I'm not, well, I'm mostly finished, but again, there could be little errors that have crept in for you. So have a look at that. What I figured out is that the equation of this parabola is minus a half x plus one x minus four. Now, this is not standard form, but it is a form of a parabola. It's just a form, what we call root form. And if the question has said nothing more, that is, you don't have to go any further. You don't have to spend any more time on it. But if you needed to get it into standard form, what you would have to do is I would suggest first dealing with them, like basically deal with this part over here by using FOIL multiply it out, and then at the very end, multiply by minus a half. But I'm not going to go into that today because I, I think we need more practice just um, doing this process. So are there any questions about this method? Again, um, I know we need to do some more, but basically the method goes, you're given the two x-intercepts and you're given one other point. And to find the equation, you write down the root form you sub in the x-intercepts and then you find the value of a, and that's the process. Now, I just want to ask one other question. Can you see how, um, and I want everyone to vote up or down for this. If it's x plus one over here, can you see how the, the x-intercept must be x minus one that it came from? So basically, can you see how it's almost the x-intercept is always the opposite of what's in the bracket? Um, so often we see that when we're solving equations, we see it the one way, then the answer is the other way. I just want to point out that there is a connection between these brackets and the x-intercepts. Okay, let's practice another example just like this one. So I want you to take a screenshot of this process. And trust me, guys, it, it's going to get so easy once you've done a couple. So take your screenshot. Yes, please shine. It's your time to yeah. shine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, students who want to ask questions can go ahead. But what we're going to do is instead of giving you the graph, this time I'm just going to give you this information. So you need to find me the parabola that has X intercepts at one naught and four naught, and it goes through the point two minus one. So those students who are feeling comfortable, get on with that. Those students who would like to ask some more questions, I'm going to open the floor for a bit of a discussion about what happened there. So Nonta Koza was asked, did I leave, do I leave it like that? If I continued, was it wrong? No, it's not wrong, um, Nonta Koza. I simply have said, is this a valid form of a parabola? Yes. 
if the so it's not wrong to stop there but if the question said leave in standard form standard form um is basically just it doesn't look exactly like that standard form is just ax squared plus bx plus c and so in order to put this into standard form you'd have to multiply out some of the brackets and get it to the form where it's just a number x squared and so on but that is a separate skill which we're not going to deal with tonight it's not terribly difficult but unless they say put it in standard form um you know you don't have to if you remember in the last lesson we said there's three forms of the parabola there's the standard form there's the alternate or turning point form and then there's something called the, the root form and we always move between them as we need to okay so i hope that was helpful if not, raise your hand and I will do my best to assist with your, your question. I like to start by just writing out the root form just to get my brain in the right. So let's just make sure you start by doing that. Okay, so the next thing is I'm probably going to sub in my x-intercepts. And I'm also going to write down this point that's going to help me figure out what a is. Oh, Bukhlale, I'm so happy that we can help you. Honestly, that's the reason we're here. Oh, girl. Really yes. Is. Sending lots of hugs. Hugs, hugs, Bukhlale. I think, Bukhlale, one of the things about the internet is it has a, this environment has a slightly different feel to the classroom and there's pros and cons, but there are some awesome ones in that you can just basically start from scratch, you know, and that's what's, it's pretty cool. Um, so... I need to sub in for my x values. So I'm going to get a 2 here and a 2 there. Okay. And so now I need to find what a is. So, Siabonga, what we're trying to find is we're trying to find the equation of the parabola that goes through these points. So if you look at the very top, Determine the equation of the parabola for each of the following. Okay. So what do we have left now? Minus one, A. So this is one. This is minus two. And then if I divide both sides by two, Uh, wait, I divide both sides by minus two. I'm going to get a half. So A is going to be a half. And so if A is a half, the equation of my parabola is going to be a half X minus one, X minus four. So guys, I just want to check. Let's do one where we change it into st um, standard form. So this is the equation of the parabola in root form. Can you please try and multiply it out and see what you can do to get it into standard form? Okay. So while students are working out what the equation of this is in standard form, I want to take questions. So come Kamokhelo, why don't you come online quickly and we'll... Um, we'll have a bit of a chat while students are changing this into standard form. Okay, Kamokhelo, I'm going to unmute you. Um, so I'm yes. lost by the whether negative one is equal to negative two a. Okay. okay. So aren't we trying to uh, get the a by itself? So don't we divide by negative two? Exactly that. I just moved my working up here. So 
if you think about it, I basically just did that. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I see. I now, see. a negative divided by a negative. Okay, well, this is going to be one. So I get A. And then negative one over negative two is just a half. Yes, okay. no, I see. No, I see where I'm from. Thank Perfect. you, sir. Pleasure. So in our journey to changing this to standard form, what I suggest is leaving the half by itself and just doing the multiplying out first. And so basically you do FOIL inside here and you deal with that first before you unleash the half on these two brackets. So that's my advice. We get that. Guys, I'm so proud of you. Everybody's trying this question. Well done. Yeah. Now, once you've multiplied out those brackets, you actually realize that there's a, a middle term that basically these need to be uh, subtracted. So you get minus 5x. And then the final step is to multiply the half by all these things. And so you get a half x squared. Now you may need to use your calculator for this one. What's a half times minus five? It's minus five over two or minus two and a half. And then a half times four is plus two. And so it's a little bit of extra work to put it into standard form. Um, and you, unless it tells you to do it, you don't have to do it. Um, but just have a look at that half. That half is a bit sneaky because you have to apply it to each single thing inside the bracket. Okay, let us, now I know that I'm pushing you a little bit here, but I want to do one more of these questions before the break. So I'm going to leave this up on the board so that you can ask more questions to me. But those students who are feeling comfortable, I would like to, I want you to try and do one more just like this. So 1.4 is at the bottom of the screen. Can you see that, Yulanda? Can you see it nice and, and clearly? Yes, that's nice and clear. Yeah. So Rachel, I know it was a bit quick. So I'm going to actually ask you to ask questions um, about that. Trans I just want to make sure that I have a question here for students who want to move on. But I would love yes. to have a chat with you if, you, um, if you're able to unmute yourself. Um, so you can raise your hand, Rachel, like this. We can unmute you and you can ask your question. Okay, in proposal. Yeah. Because I, I think line. I do need to go through, um, basically, I'll, I'll summarize what I did. What I did was I first multiplied out the stuff that I'm kind of putting in yellow. And when I multiplied that out, it basically landed up here. Then when it landed up here, I neatened it up by making this minus 5x. But the real clever thing was I kept the half on the outside. The half is not invited to the party. The half oh. at the very end. Yeah, record the normal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, I, I'm not sure yeah. why can't I mute yeah. non tokos on yeah. my side. You can hit mute all if you need to. Um, I think it's, there's some other feedback coming through, I think. Okay, teacher Peter, please unmute. For some reason, I don't know why. Mute me, that's fine. Perfect. Um, okay. So I hope that that was helpful. Um, if you want to talk a little bit more about this part, please raise your hand. However, in the interim, I'd like you to try and do 1.4. Right. See if you can find the equation of the parabola 1.4. And take a screenshot of this if you need to. Yep, it's your time to shine now. Take a screenshot. Here we go. And I'm just going to write the standard form of the uh, that the root form of the parabola again, just to get me moving. And then I'm going to start filling things in. 
So x minus minus one. Oh, there's a lot of brackets going on there, aren't there? <laughs> and then x minus three, which should give me this. And now I need to use this point to help me. The two one. See if you can get to the A value. I see a couple of students have answers coming through. There's a couple of different um okay. Okay, so the next step is going to be to put the, the two one into this. So we get one equals a two plus one, two minus three. And then we get three times by minus one. And then we get one equals minus three A. And then we divide both sides by minus three and we get A is minus a third. And so the equation of our parabola will be minus a third x plus one x minus three. Now we don't have time for it now, but if we wanted to change it in standard form, all we would do is we would deal with this part first. We'd foil it, neaten it up, and then multiply by the minus third at the very end. Okay. And just to remind you, this a value this minus a third in front, it tells me that this is an unhappy parabola. So if you understand why the A value makes this parabola unhappy, just give a thumbs up because we've, we've spent a lesson or so away from sketching graphs, but I want to emphasize this is the same A value from earlier on, which if it's negative, it's an unhappy parabola. If it's positive, it's a happy parabola. Uh, and I just want you to if you understand that, give me a thumbs up. Just want to Yo, check. Well done for everybody. Well done. Yeah. You guys did really well on this question. All right. Fantastic. Because I just want to keep making the connections, guys, between the old work and the stuff we're doing today. It's all different parts of working with parabolas. And we need to constantly think and, and make them come together. Okay. Let us stand up and have a quick stretch break. Um, Yulinda will be cheering us along and giving us commentary about who's got the best stretch. So let's, yep. let's stand up. Let's do this, guys. And I'm at the gym, so you better show me a very nice <laughs> stretch so that yeah, I can I use it for my next gym lesson. I'm going to do a calf stretch. Let's do this, guys. Yeah. Stand up. To just stretch. Yeah. Take Your body a break. will thank you. Your body will Definitely. thank you. I promise you. Oh, look, at, there's some dancing there. I think maybe a little dancing Ooh. is in order if you've got rhythm. <laughs> I don't think Where? I should try. <laughs> Who is that? I want to see. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> Peter, I think you win. Teacher Peter win for this stretch today, guys. I can't you believe you let Teacher Peter win for this stretch. Come on. Let's do it. Let's see your legs. Lurelo, nice Lurelo, stretch, girl. Stretch. Let's do some stretch. Let's do some stretching. No, no, Kulunga. No, Kulunga, you win, girl. It's all yours. Good. I see you. I stretch see you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Guys, I know it's late, but trust me, your body thanks you every time you stretch. Uh, it does. It does. Us, it's important. Let us do a brain break but it's a two-part brain break there's going to be a mass 24 and there's going to be a a a trip to Ooh, these looking okay. jobs so that's 24 can you solve okay. can you solve these two okay so the first dog i think all of you have got yeah everyone is on fire with these things seven There we go. And then yellow is 
I see Calvin has said it's three. Okay. Now the orange dog is going to be six. I agree because six plus three plus seven gives you 16. So what is the final answer? What's that going to be? I agree with the answers coming in. The final answer, six, seven plus six is 13, minus three is 10, plus six is 16. So, Did you notice that we actually had two answers there? So now I'm wondering, those that got 22, how did you arrive there? Yeah. So while we, just know, while we're doing that, can anybody solve this mass 24 card? So that's my other brain break. So that's a six, four, two, and two. It's a nice, easy one just to, to not neglect our math 24. Ah, they didn't see the plus sign. Two heads, what? There's no two heads, is there? Yeah. No, no there's no two heads. What do you mean <laughs> point out two heads? <laughs> Who can get who can get the math 24 card? It's not too hard. So uh, exactly. So I think anybody else have a different way of doing it? I see Rachel's put one way there. So she said six times four plus two minus two is 24. Or Tabello said four times six. Uh, there we go. And also plus two minus two. All right, so we've solved the mass 24, we've solved that, and it's time to get back to the parabolas. Oh, and Rebona, I also agree with your way. Divided by two times by two is perfect. Okay, everyone? This class was on fire, well done. Slightly different part for the second part of the lesson. Instead of using the root form of the parabola, we are going to use what's called the turning point of the parabola. And you'll notice this time, we only have two points. Now, I'm going to show you an example of how to do this, and then you are going to do it for me um, in an example after that. So all I want to say is if you're given the turning point, it's wonderful because to find the equation of a parabola, all you need is the turning point and one other point. So going back to our lesson from the other day, I want you to think about what do you think the P value and the Q value are going to be in this particular question? I'm going to leave them blank. We learned a little bit about what the plus P does in the previous lesson. And so if we know that the turning point is minus three, I think we can work out what this value over here is that's missing. And I also think we can work out what this value of Q is just referring to this. Can anybody help me? So think about this. If I know that the turning point is minus three, the graph has been shifted three units to the left. It, but in order to sh shift the graph three units to the left, what does the bit inside the bracket have to be? So the P is actually not going to be minus three. The P, what we're going to have here is we're going to have a plus three. And this is what I want to point out. It's always a bit sneaky is that when you're given the turning point, the P value relates to the horizontal shift. And whatever you see the turning point is, the number inside the equation is going to be the opposite. So this is going to be plus three. But when it comes to the um, when it comes to the y value of the of the turning point, that value we can just sub in straight away here, and that's plus one. So the very first step when finding the equation of a parabola when given a turning point and another point is just to translate the turning point into this um, turning point form, and we have to be very careful with the x value because it, it works the opposite way around. But now we're still not done because we need to find out what this A value is. But what I do is I use the same logic 
as what I used before is I use this one five. I'm going to sub it in. So I get a five here. The A stays here. The X is one. And so now I need to simplify this. So using algebra, one plus three is four. Four squared is 16. So A times 16 plus one. Then I take away one from both sides and I'm going to get four is 16 a. And then if I divide both sides by 16, I'm going to get a is equal to four over 16 or a is one quarter. So what is the equation of my parabola going to be? It's going to be a quarter x plus three squared plus one. Now this is what's called the turning point form. And in some ways it's actually one of the simplest, but you have to make sure you get this translating of the turning point part right. If they do ask you to leave it in standard form, then you have to multiply out this bracket. But at this stage, it doesn't say that. It just says, um, leave it in standard form. Okay. Take a screenshot. Um, if you are confused and you want to talk further about this example, I will um, gladly talk to you further. But what I would like is I would like you to try. Let's actually bring this across. Oh, I've made the graph unhappy. Let's bring it back. I'm going to leave this here for you. Can you see the, the second graph that basically has is below it in gray? Um, um I, so it, yeah. I can see it. I mean, it's clear to me. I think it's clear. I think everyone can see it, right? Please do comment if you can see the graph. Yeah. I want to know, can you see the graph? However, otherwise, maybe I can move it around somewhere. Let's see. I think everyone can see it, or at least majority okay. of people can see it. So what I'm going to do is I want to ask you guys, please find me the equation of the parabola that is over here. This one down here. And I want you to use the alternate form of a parabola, which looks like that. Over to you guys. Knock yourself out. Not literally, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, well, we added Ritabile is on the line for the question. You can go ahead. Yeah, unmute. Well, I, for some reason, my thing is stopped. Oh, there we go. Ritabile, go yeah. ahead. Good evening, sir. I have a question. Yep, go ahead. So, what if we were not given um, any intercepts? Okay, so in this case, we're not given, we're given the turning point and we're given um, one other point. So we're not given both intercepts here. So I'm saying, what if they don't give us any x-intercepts or y-intercepts? Would, would we get a question like that? It is possible, but it's unlikely. So normally what they could do is they could sometimes give you the y, they always give you the y-intercept. And so sometimes, but I'm, I'm not going to do that whole question today, but basically if they give you the y-intercept, you can then work out what C is. And then if they give you two other points, you can work out what A and B is using uh, simultaneous equations. But that isn't the type of question I'm going to do today, but it is possible, but it's not, it's far less common than the one we're doing. Does that help, Ritabile? Yes, sir. thank you, sir. Okay. So let's get that translation step first. Are we all getting y equals a x plus one squared plus six to start with? And then what is the other point on our graph? I think the other point is down here. Let me get some red to help me. Uh, and what is that point? That point is the point 0 three down here. 
And so we can sub that into our equation to help us find what A is. So let's do that now. We get three naught plus one squared plus six. Oh, that's actually quite easy because it's just going to end up being one. And so if I take away six from both sides, I should get that A is minus three. And then if A is minus three, so just take, look at how I took away six from both sides there. My final answer should be, I want black. y equals minus 3 x plus 1 squared uh, plus 6. Okay. Was there a question, Nizole? I see your hand is is up. Can I have it? Would you like to ask a question? Um, Sir? Yeah. For the equation, why did 1 turn into a positive? Why did 1 turn into a positive? Um, because uh, if you look at the substitution step, so if you look at, this was what I was subbing in. I was subbing in a zero. And that zero got subbed in here and naught plus one is just one. And then one squared is just one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do is I would love for you guys to try and solve this one over here, I want you to find me the equation of the parabola with turning point one, one and passing through the point naught two. Let's do this guys. Remember, don't be left behind. If you have a question while they're busy working on 1.1, yeah. you're more than welcome to us. But for all of you, we are busy with 1.1. 1 .1. Let's do this. Yep. I actually like this method. We have learned how many methods now, teacher Peter? It's three. There's, well, there's yeah. well, two of this. Um, but yeah, essentially there's the, the root form and then there's the turning point form. And these are two methods we use to find the equation of a parabola. Nice. I see a bonga. Let's go to you. So Sia Bonga, I've asked you to unmute. If you hit the unmute, that would be awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. I'm struggling to find, to, to transpose P and Q. Okay. So let me give you the steps that I follow. I start by writing down the standard form. Sorry, not the standard form, the turning point form. So yes. would you agree with me that you have to sort of memorize this part? Yes, certainly. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is I need to basically work out what this thing over here is. And I also need to work out what this thing over here is. Yes. And to help me, I'm going to use the turning point. Now, the, the X one is a little bit sneaky. It always works the opposite way. And so that's the thing I'm, I'm watching out for. And when I write this down, I know that it says one, so I'm going to do the opposite. It's going to become minus one. Oh, does yes, that help a little bit? Now, yes, it does. Q, Q, it's a little bit easier. What's Q value? What's Q's value going to be? Um, two, no, two, two, yes, two. No, don't be, no, because remember, Q is related to the turning point. So oh, if you think one. it's one, yeah. Yes. So if we don't have to change that one at all. We just keep it the same. Oh, and yes, now, yes. now you're going to go to this point naught two, and you're going to use it. You're going to sub it into this equation to help you, and and you're going to help you find a. Okay, thank you, sir. Pleasure. So let's see what you guys get here. So not two, so I'm gonna sub in. Uh, 
I am plus one. And then we're going to get uh, we're going to get you know, basically a times one plus one, and then we're going to take away one from both sides. So take away one from both sides, and we're going to get a is one. So I unless I made a mistake, let's have a look. Uh, take away one, one, no, I get A is one. Yep. So everybody, let's do corrections. And Brittany is on the... Oh, Brittany, go ahead. Yeah. Brittany, ask your question there. Okay. So I would like to ask, like, on the... Um, there is a positive P, but now it's a negative one. Yeah. Okay, How? so the, the, at the beginning of the last lesson, I did a little example of this. But basically, do you know how when you're solving equations, yes, uh, let me, like you have these sometimes when it's factorized, you'll have a bracket like x minus 1 and uh, x plus 2. And then you know the answers will always be the opposite signs. They're kind of the other way around. Have you seen that before in maths? Yes, sir. So it kind of works like that, is that when we're dealing with the x's, when we deal with the x, or whatever the, the value of the x turning point is, in this case, it's one, it's going to be the opposite way around when I get to the inside the bracket. Does oh, that help? Thank you. Location, sir. Pleasure. That's a pleasure. It is a strange one. A lot of students will just learn that initially and it over time, you start to make the connections between the pieces. All right. Are there any other questions, everyone? Okay. You're doing so well. So, guys, what I want to do is I want to finish off by talking about something a bit different called domain and range. Because you've done so well today, I actually want to just add, basically, if we look back over this course, we've learned how to sketch parameters. We've also learned now how to find the equations. We need to throw in some more functiony words. So I want to look at, uh, let's look at something, this one over here. And I want to talk about the words domain and range. Now in this question, the domain and range, if I asked you what the domain and range is, could anybody tell me? Um, well, actually, no, let me not do this one. Sorry, I should do one with a turning point. <laughs> let's make it a bit easier. So let's go to this question. Let me go down to the very bottom. And if I said to you, what is the domain and range of this particular parabola? Would anybody know what I'm talking about? Or um, give it a go. What do you think the domain and range is of this parabola? I'd be interested to see what you guys say. Okay, Kamuhelo. Yeah. So, wouldn't the domain be x is an interval of uh, negative one to negative infinity? Okay, so the domain is going to basically be any x value that goes into this parabola. And because this graph is a parabola, it's going to be actually, the domain is going to be anything along the x-axis. So uh, in the question, we figured out what the equation was. And so for this graph, we would say that the, the domain is any real number. But oh. the one that's more interesting in this case is the range. And what I want to ask you is, does this graph ever get to a highest height? If you look at it, does it ever get to the highest? What's the highest this graph gets? Okay, so I can see in the chat, many students are saying six, exactly. So in this particular graph, the highest value it gets to, or the highest y value it gets to is six. And so we say the range of this graph is y is less than or equal to six. The, the range deals with the y-axis, and the domain deals with the x-axis. And so because the highest value we can get to is 6, we just say the range is y is less than or equal to 6. Uh, 
So that basically domain in a parabola, the domain will always be X is any real number. Okay. Let's do another one like this one over here. I want you to tell me what is the domain and what is the range of this parabola? Write it in the chat um, and then we'll just um, talk a little bit. Yeah. So many students would like uh, the explanation again. I think uh, okay. majority of them would like to know what is exactly the domain and okay. what is the range. All right. So guys, let me, in this question, the equation of this graph is, I'm going to steal it from the answer, y equals 2 x minus 2 squared plus 3. And below, you can see it's a parabola, and it's not going to be plus 2 because it's unhappy, so it must be, oh, there must be a mistake there because it's, I can clearly see it's unhappy, so I'm going to assume it's minus 2. Okay, so what do we mean by the domain for a graph? Basically, the domain deals with the x-axis. And so any x value that can go into this function and give you a y value will be the domain. So for example, is x is 1 in the domain? I can put x is 1 into the equation. And when I do that, I'm going to get out that y value over there. So x is 1 is in the domain. But so is x is 2, so is x is 2 and a half. Any x value will be valid going into this function. Now that's, in, in like a minute or two, what we would call the domain. And we say that x then is any real number. Because even if, even if we chose the number 5, 5 would, would relate to a y value down here. And even if we went all the way up to 10, it would always, this graph keeps on going down forever. So any X value can go in. And because of that, we say that the domain is any real number. Now the range here is a little bit more exciting. The range is what is the highest or lowest value that the graph gets to. Now, if you look at this graph, the turning point is the highest point that it gets to. It's three. Now, because the highest point it gets to is three, we can never have a y value with this graph, which is greater than three. And so what we say with this graph is the range is less than or equal to three. So in the next, so guys, in the next course, in the next course, the first two lessons, we are going to deal with exam questions that deal with straight lines and parabolas brought together. And in that uh, lesson, I'm going to talk about things like domain and range. I'm going to talk about increasing and decreasing. And so if you feel unsure about domain and range, know that this was just a little like curtain raiser. We'll talk more about that in the next lesson. Okay. But for now, with parabolas, generally the range is the more exciting, but the domain is pretty boring. It's just any X value because any X value can go into the equation. Whereas when it gets to y, y is limited. Um, and just to kind of show you, to end off with this, imagine we had a parabola that looked like this. I'm making up parabolas on the spot for you guys. I want you to tell me what is the range of the parabola, I'm going to call it g. So write in the chat, what is the range of this parabola g that I've just drawn for you? Tobelo, is that an answer? Yours. Yes. And Tell me what the range is for the blue one. It's y is greater or equals to, is it three? It's, it's in line with, I'll help you here. It's in line with minus two. Um, y is greater or equals to negative two. Okay, I'm so impressed, Tobelo. You know why? Wow. I, tricky. I switched it around. So you had to make sure that Y, in this case, minus two was the lowest value it got to. And you told me Y was greater than or equal to minus two. And, and so wow. you picked up that trick. So you didn't fail inside the 
Good job. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Okay, so just in case, in case those who maybe did get caught by the trick, look at the happy parabola. The happy parabola gets to a lowest point. Its lowest point in life is minus two. And so that's why we say the range of the graph is everything above minus two. That's why y is greater than minus two. When we dealt with the unhappy parabola, the highest it ever got in life was three. And it could only be three or below that. Okay. Everyone, I think we've squeezed a lot into tonight, maybe even a little bit too much. So I want to end it there. But remember that next week we are carrying on with functions and we're going to bring straight lines and parabolas together for the first two lessons. And so we'll be adding to your knowledge base. So I see that Yulanda has put the quiz uh, in, the, in the chat. And I just want to say a really big well done. Like, I think you are really making progress. Yeah, uh, it's much work. good. <laughs> it's respectful, yeah. <laughs> they did really good. Oh. Totally. <laughs> yes, it's a quiz day. All right. So over to the quiz for you guys. And I just want to say, I hope that those who are going on holiday or writing exams tomorrow or the next day, just good luck. Uh, and yeah, well done. It's time for us to sign off for the night. Thank you, Yulanda, for all your help. Much appreciated. Thank you, teacher Peter. I'll go and lift some, lift some weights at the gym. You're in place. So no, no escaping without a workout. No, I don't have no the energy, bro. I'm going home. No, you got you to do some, some bicep curls first. Um, Bokhlale, I see you have a question. What's your question, Bokhlale? Bokhlale. So I was asking about trigonometry reduction. Okay, can I recommend that you look at the videos we did on reduction formula? Okay, um, that would be the best because we've done on the website, you'll see that there are videos about that. 